Dr. Landry, we're really happy to have you here with us today, all the way from Oxford. I uh, wanted to ask you, what are some of the challenges of doing research in big data? Okay, so I think the one can put it at several levels. The first is how does one collect information? Collect information on, not on one or two individuals, but in, collect information at scale, on uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of people. And collect that in, information that crosses a range of diseases, a range of habits, a range of environments. And collect that information in a way that uh, allows real deep assessment, deep understanding of particular diseases. So that if you're interested in dementia and stroke, you understand exactly what the neuroimaging looks like. If you're interested in cancer, you understand the cell biology across hundreds of thousands of people. But I think the final aspect of the collecting information is thinking about the time components, whether that's repeated measurements, how often should I uh, measure something on a day by day, an hour by hour, a minute by minute basis, but also how do I measure uh, the consequences of uh, different uh, diseases over the long term. So my work, for example, uh, uh, involved in the UK Biobank study, a study of half a million people in the UK, uh, and uh, colleagues who are doing a parallel study in China, half a million people in China, is trying to systematically collect data on that sort of scale with all the different factors that might influence uh, disease. And in the case of UK Biobank, even with neuroimaging, so we'll have neuroimaging brain uh, MRI scans on 100,000 people, and then following them up through routine healthcare records and through going back to them with repeat questionnaires and with repeat information about their cognitive function and, in fact, their physical function, their activity. If you can put all that together into one environment, I, th I think there's a huge potential for learning. Right, so it seems like there's so many different facets to doing research in this field of big data. I'm just very impressed that there are scientists out there doing all of this great work. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the work that you're doing right now? Yeah, so I mean, our, our work has ranged from um, uh, prospective cohort studies. That means sort of studies I've described I take half a million people, I say take half a million people, find half a million people who are willing to participate, collect data and follow them prospectively, through to randomized controlled trials. Uh, not trials of 10 people on the drug versus 10 people not on the drug, that tells you relatively little, but actually of 10,000 people on the drug and 10,000 people not on the drug, followed not just for five years, uh, but for, for the longer term. So one example is in the area of statins. So statins are one of the most widely used uh, treatments worldwide now. Uh, they really only came in about 20 years ago with the publication of the first trial results. And a lot of questions have been rightly asked. Do, the drug, do they uh, lower risk? Are they good drugs? Uh, are they safe? Uh, is, are they suitable for all people? So if you want, as an individual patient, you go and see your, your doctor, what you want is the knowledge that's been generated from tens or hundreds of thousands of people to be applied to you. And if you take the example of statins, where we've done much of the uh, individual trial work, but also the meta-analysis, bringing the trials together, what one can see is, yes, the drugs work. They not only work overall, they lower risk, but they work in the old and the young, they work in men and they work in women, they work in people who've got diabetes or kidney disease, they have got work in people who've got no disease at all. They even work in people who don't have what we would think of as high cholesterol. So we can actually specialise the medicine, if you like, by saying, actually, yeah, these are drugs that really are effective because we have robust evidence. So I think that potential for record linkage and using the sort of routinely collected data, they're collected for a completely different purpose, uh, but they're incredibly powerful for informing healthcare decisions. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Landry, for your time. That was very interesting to hear about your work. You're welcome, and thank you for having us.